Welcome to another MAID Training Academy video. MAID Training Academy provides online classes to become a certified professional cleaner for as little as $200. As a certified professional cleaner, you will learn how to deal with hundreds of different conditions, situations, and ways to clean a house. Watching these videos is not a substitute for certification because they only show you a few conditions and situations. For more information about course topics and enrollment, visit MaidTrainingAcademy.com. This video is regarding how to dust and clean a family room. So let's get started. The first thing we find here when we enter a family room or a TV room is that it's not going to be in a pristine condition because the Although people do pick up uh, before the maids arrive, this is a pretty common uh, state that you'll find a home in. So like any uh, job or the house, the first thing we do is we high dust. Now you'll see here that Brittany is using an extension pole high duster. Uh, not all maid companies use that, uh, but in this case we're showing that we are. And you'll see that that allows us to get in this room, which has very high ceilings, uh, lets you reach further uh, please note you're still not able to reach to the very top and customers certainly understand that and again a lot of companies don't even get above about a six foot pole. Uh, this is an expandable one. Now you'll see how she's using it. Uh, it's a great tool. Uh, she's uh, expanding it and consolidating when she needs to go high. She extends it out. Hits all the areas that she can reach safely. And then when she's done with that uh, she'll either if she has room to bring it back down or she'll collapse it. Now she certainly looked back again to make sure, but it's a, it's a, a constant uh, adjustment of that extension pole to get the best out of it and to keep it safe. A long pole, when you bring it back, uh, can bump into and knock over and damage uh, something in the customer's home. You'll see her doing some of the walls, whether she's looking for cobwebs, finding cobwebs, or just going over the hot spots. You'll see she's doing all that high dusting with that extension pole, and you'll see she brought it down to do the low dusting part of the high dusting. So high dusting actually is a bit of a misnomer because you're doing both your high dusting and your low dusting. The next thing she's going to do, and not all, all mid companies do this, not all of them, uh, we're going to do that ceiling fan that's way up there, and she's going to have to stand on her two-step step ladder to get that. So as you'll see here, she's uh, maneuvering the, the ceiling fan, uh, dusting the edge of those, that's where your dust will accumulate. And then she'll get in a rhythm here, and you'll see that she's able to get all of them as she's counting that. She's concentrating. She's on that two-step step ladder. So be very careful on that. And you see she's getting to that rhythm where she's getting every edge and every blade. Now she's doing the bottom sides. Where she did the edge, now she's doing the bottom side. And now she's doing the globe. Now, some, some new uh, professional cleaners will be a little leery of touching that. Oh, it's going to fall on me. No, they are designed and professionally installed not to fall and to be handled in that regard uh, because that's just the way how houses are built. So don't be afraid of that, uh, of falling on you in, in lieu of not touching it because you're actually pulling that dust off using that Webster dusting head. So the next thing uh, Brittany's doing is she's preparing uh, to clean the room. And when you do uh, any large room, you work around the perimeter first, and then you finish up in the middle. So the first thing she's going to do as she works around, top to bottom, left to right, is that she's dusting those blinds using her Swiffer. And you'll see that she's holding those blinds in place, and she also allows her to uh, spread those blinds out and uh, get all the surface. She's also getting down to the very bottom of every blind. And then she's flipping those blinds over to get the other side of the blind. And she's going sideways because that does a better job. And she's moving fairly quickly. Now, this is a bi-weekly customer. So these blinds are actually in pretty good uh, condition. Uh, not too much dust, although even in two weeks, you can certainly get dust accumulation for sure. And once again, she's getting all of those uh, blinds, not just the ones that are exposed. After she does that, typically you'll have to check to see if there's anything behind there like a, uh, a crossbar, but she didn't. 
And one of the things that we go over in one of our videos for uh, that's specifically and only about dusting and wet wiping blinds is that you have to be careful if you're going to raise those blinds that it can get away from you. It can slip out of your hand like it just happened there. And as you see as she lowered the blinds down, she lowered them with it using her hand so they don't just flop down and land uh, on the blind or on the, on the windowsill. You can see that she dusted that picture frame on the outside because it, the, the picture itself is exposed. You never dust or wipe down any exposed surface. And so she only did the, the frame. And she's back to the blinds again and moving around in the same manner. She's going to do the blinds the same way on every blind. Now this is a, uh, a, a fairly large uh, family room, but what makes it uh, a, a big in regards to time is um, the number of blinds and the size of this blind. Uh, in your certification classes with Maid Training Academy, uh, the target is to get out of the family room in about 20 minutes or less. Uh, but then you have to add in other conditions like this is a big layout. It's got a lot more blinds than you'll find in most family rooms. So this is going to take about 30 minutes to get through this uh, family room. Once again, she's flipping over the blinds to get on both sides. Again, I encourage you to watch the other video on the Maid Training Academy uh, video uh, channel to see how we do uh, different types of blinds as well as wet wiping blinds. Now this is a recurring customer and that we are actually going to um, uh, not uh, wet wipe the blinds, we're simply uh, dusting the blinds. Two different techniques. You also have, uh, often have to work around uh, these curtains that are there. Simply get in there and go around that. And once she did find out and notice that there are no uh, crossbars or any other area behind the blind that she can get to, uh, she's not worrying about having to check that now that she rec recognizes and realizes uh, that it's not behind there. But she's still, she's dusting every blind. Uh, sometimes when the, 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 the stringer of blinds is longer than the window frame, which is often, uh, that... Um, People will uh, uh, not dust all the blinds that are kind of stacked on top of each other. You shouldn't do that. You should dust every blind. Uh, dusting blinds can be a fast process or it can be a, a long process. And actually, there's a lot of concerns with doing blinds. Again, refer back to the video. And the, your certification class goes into a lot of detail on um, how to dust blinds and different types of blinds. The metal blinds, little small metal blinds. Uh, these more uh, traditional wooden blinds or even uh, plantation shutters. Uh, they're all done slightly different. And so once again, she's moving through this fairly quickly. And uh, of course, she's looking to see if there's any dust on there. And even if there's no dust on there, you still have to dust it because your eye will be fooled. There may not be at, at, the, at eyesight much dust on there or any that you can see. But what has happened is that first layer of dust is already on there if you happen to skip it and then it'll show dust within a couple of days because it's already got that fine first layer of dust that the eye cannot see. Now a lot of made companies uh, will skip or rotate uh, dusting the blinds. Uh, uh, some some made companies believe that they it, it doesn't need it. Uh, that's just a, certainly a, an opinion on each made company. So check with your employer to see what their policy is or your customer's uh, request and desires. Uh, but again, uh, if you do uh, dust the blinds, it is in this fashion. And again, you're working top to bottom and left to right. And when you're done, you always return the blinds to their original position. Again, she's dusting as she continues to move her way around the room. You're doing the perimeter first. After you work around a big room, then you move toward the inside. And that is the flow of a room. That's how you flow through a room. And the way you get through a job on time at a professional pace is that you have to know how to tackle a room. Where do I start? Where do I finish? And that's all reviewed in May Training Academy certification classes. And once again, uh, even though there's a lot of blinds, she's doing a great job on all of them. She's not rushing through this, going, oh my gosh, this room's got a whole bunch of blinds. 
I need to make sure I get out on time. Uh, but she's not rushing. She's going through that carefully. She's flipping it and doing both sides of the blinds. Great job. And you have to be careful with blinds. A uh, lot more to it than just what she's doing. Uh, blinds can easily fall. Uh, they can fall on you. Uh, they can break. They can bend. All kinds of problems with them. So, you know, you'll see here she's using a Swiffer, which is the, probably the most common thing to use to, to use blinds. But if you're wet wiping them like you would on a spring clean or move in, move out, it's a, it's, it's a different format. So that's why you have to know the different ways. Now she's finished the run at that point. She stopped at that point. Why? Because now she needs to do some dusting. So she's spraying uh, her um, dusting spray right on the rack. And there are companies that use different racks for different uh, tasks. Uh, one color for dusting, one color for cleaning, whatever the case might be. Now you'll see again, Brittany is using her step ladder. Uh, not all made companies do, uh, but if your company does use a step ladder uh, that gets you able to reach uh, these areas that m some other made companies don't m uh, hit. And so depending on you know your, uh, your uh, policy uh, at where you work or the customer wants, uh, there's a lot of advantages of using a step ladder. So now where she could only reach with a Swiffer, uh, she Swiffered that. But now that she's dusting, she's using her rag. A Swiffer does a decent job, great job on blinds. Uh, but, but on flat surfaces, the best thing to do is actually to, is to hand wipe those items down. Uh, you also have a little bit of that, that dusting oil on there that helps to grab and hold that dust coming off. Uh, the challenge of simply using a Swiffer is that not only a Swiffer does capture it, but it's also putting it back into the air uh, or, again, moving it down where a rag is going to hold it and grab it. So a rag is always better in dusting items than a Swiffer is, but a Swiffer is a great tool. Can't have a, 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 a good maid without a good duster or a Swiffer. So once again, she's reaching up there where she can't reach with her hand, carefully dusting all those items and going around and, try, and, and touching everything. So again, uh, the, the, the qu a common question of, uh, of new cleaners is, what do we clean? What do we touch? The answer is everything. So as you move around, you're touching everything. You're dusting everything. And it is a combination of Swiffer and rag. Some people will put that uh, Swiffer in their back pocket uh, some some maids will use aprons. Some will stick it in the back pocket of their jeans. So whatever the case might be, when you clean a room and a house, uh, you, you have to have a lot of your tools right there, right ready on you. So you'll see again, uh, we, we, a, good, a good cleaner doesn't clean around items. They pick up and clean everything behind and under. Uh, a common complaint from customers is, you just went around things. People don't want to do that. If, you're, if they're hiring and paying good money for a professional cleaner, they want their house cleaned better than the way they clean it. They want it cleaned perfectly, which means you touch and move everything. You get around items. See how she's moving up and she's dusting that. Now you'll see another move. It's used throughout every job. Is, is periodically shake your rag. So anything that's stuck on there, big pieces will go to the floor and the floor is the last thing you do. And so you'll get that up with your vacuum cleaner or your broom. Uh, so that's just the standard process. Of course, uh, be careful. Accidents can happen. Uh, you can't have too many too many breakage claims in a home before a customer says, hey, you're just breaking too many things, you're out. So customers can understand if it happens every once in a while. Maybe they'll understand. Uh, you can certainly get fired on the first accident for sure so you always want to be careful so again she's picking up the items she's dusting them or with the with the rag all the way down now that picture frame has glass on it so it's okay to do the front of it where the other one uh, had nothing on the front of it and so you could cause some damage uh, to an open face painting or picture um, so always be careful now you don't have to move everything see that electric box the cable box she didn't pick that up uh, that's smart because, you know, that's electrical stuff and there's no need to get under that. Uh, but beyond that, she's going back to everything else. She's hand wiping down. Great job. And putting it back carefully. 
and they're not just putting it back. Make sure it looks great together. Don't just throw it back and keep you know moving. You got to put it back. Go. Does that look right? Is that where it was? Does it need to be tweaked a little bit? And look at the good hands that Brittany has. Is that she's using both hands, not just one hand. Being very careful to hold it carefully. Look at her left hand. It's really holding it tightly, actually, so it doesn't fall. Even something like that, if it fell, not only could you break the, the that stand, it could fall on the floor and cause floor damage. You probably saw where she actually used her Swiffer on those uh, those cabinet door fronts. Uh, that's a judgment call. Uh, sometimes, especially if it's a sprinkling, you'd wet wipe that down. But in a recurring customer, uh, you may only have to use your Swiffer uh, on the front of those cabinets. Uh, fireplace uh, uh, covers and grids like this, grills, uh, certainly can be a challenge. You know, what do I do? That's again, we do everything. And so um, as you go around, you're picking up and dusting everything. Uh, fireplace hearths can be made of all kinds of stuff, all kinds of challenges. Those things are identified in your certification class, all the different types that you have. And so the question is, do you move that screen? The answer is, you bet you do. And to do that carefully, because they can be heavy, they can fall, they can, you know, they, they, you know, like anything else, you're moving around a lot of different moving parts here, and you got to be careful. And so she's using her Swiffer, a little bit easier to reach, and it's perfectly fine to do it that way. And typically, you don't go in a fireplace where there could be soot, uh, uh, so you stay away from that. But anything surrounding that uh, is is fair game to get done. Now, this home again, all homes are different. This one has a, a built-in, not a china closet, but a little uh, display closet there. Typically, you don't go into cabinets, you don't go into drawers, you don't go into bureaus, you don't go into china hutches, but you may uh, clean the glass on the outside. So in this case, uh, the customer requested that every time uh, the outside of the glass is done, uh, a lot of these in uh, these bigger homes, if you have this, uh, that seal is tight to keep the dust out. So whatever they have on display in, in there uh, stays dust free. So it doesn't need to be dusted. And she's using her step ladder like a champ. Once you're done with something, get it out of your way. So a lot of different cleaning products you can use, uh, all-purpose cleaner uh, or glass cleaner. Some all-purpose cleaners also uh, multitask as a glass cleaner. So it's always important to know what your company is using or to know what your products are if you're working independently for yourself. Now we're coming over to couches, all kinds of different couches, cloth, you name it. But this one's leather, so she can use her Swiffer to uh, get the, in any dust or, or pet hair off of there. Uh, depending on the customer request, they may want you to wet wipe it down, which is pretty rare. But again, that's why you, you get certified because you go through all those different scenarios. Here's a great move when, you, when you're staging a house. You get the pillow flat, and we call this the karate chop. It's a great look. Some companies will have a kind of a standard look, but you have to flatten it, that pillow down first, flip it over, karate chop. It looks fancy, looks nice. And she continues to move on around the room. Now this room is adjoining the kitchen, so she's not gonna you know, get into that area. But the next thing she's gonna do is she is actually gonna get her, her rag wet, uh, just very, very just, just barely damp. And the reason why is she's going to work on a suede uh, uh, chairs. So this is a great move. Uh, the, these are moves are taught in the um, May Training Academy certification classes. Picking up a dog toy there and another one, putting it in the dog basket. Now this is just, just water only, balling this thing up, and she's going to draw lines in the chair. This is the difference between a great, a good cleaner and a great cleaner. This is between the customer coming home and going, oh, did they clean the house today? And a customer goes, wow, look how great my chair looks. And it doesn't take very long, but it does take some time. 
And, and along the way, if you see cat hair or dog hair on there, you're getting that off. So you're not cleaning it. You're simply brushing it with a very lightly damp rag. Clean rag, of course, which is what she got. She got a new rag, not one that she was cleaning something else with. It had something else on it. It was a brand new rag. And you can see the lines are left over from the last time she came to the house. That's the back side. And that, those lines don't last very long until someone sits in it. But boy, they sure look pretty, don't, doesn't it? Look at the one on the right and the one on the left. Let's get her to put that pillow on there nicely. Pick something off there. Look how different those look. Night and day. Customer comes home to see that. Wow, I love my maid service. Next thing she's doing, she's moving around the room still. There's a little stand here. Now, when you have a, a family room, because people hang out there and watch television, people eat there. See that little table there? There was some food stuff on there, stuck on there. So she's getting her all-purpose cleaner, not her dusting spray, her all-purpose cleaner to clean that like you would a kitchen countertop because there's food on there. And before she puts that other little book holder there, she dusts it quickly on the top where dust would be, and then she moves on, and she puts the items back where they were. Now she's going back to her dusting rack. So you don't want to use a wet rag with cleaning solution like you would in all purpose on the wooden uh, furniture. So you're back to the dusting rack. She does go to her knee there so she can have that uh, topic or that item in, in front of her. And she's wiping the whole thing down top to bottom with her dusting rag with just a little bit of dusting spray on it. Again, you get tired of hearing it, but it's just important because you have to remember that. What do you clean? What do you touch? Everything. Now, some maid companies are going to have different policies, and you have to adhere to what, uh, you know, whoever you work for, or if you work for yourself with a customer, that's, that, that's your boss as well, too. If you're working for yourself, that is the boss. Okay? And so, you know, she's going to do every one of these books. You don't always have to do that, but that's, again, doesn't take much longer. So she's doing a great job, making sure those look great, nice, and stacked. Finishing up with that little box that was on there before. Make sure she does the sides. Now she's ready for the next chair as she continues to move left to right. So she didn't do one chair and do the other chair. What is she doing? Left to right. It's so important. It is the most common thing new cleaners don't get. They, they have to learn. You have to stick to the trail. Left to right means as you move to the right. And you can go right to left. But once you start one place and start moving in one direction, you don't skip over something. Once you run into something, you take care of it. And then you glide and move to the next item as you're moving around the room. That's how you don't miss stuff. You start missing stuff when you bounce around. I'm over here. I'm over there. I'm over here. Where did I leave off? Did I get that? I don't know. But when you're moving left or right, you're less likely to skip over stuff because you're cleaning them as you run into those items and not skipping over something. And look at the attention to detail. Look at, look at Brittany's face. She is really concentrating. That's the other thing too with a professional cleaner. You know, there's some physical challenges there, but it's a lot of mental challenges. You're concentrating. You're an artist. You, you, are, you are a professional. Look at, look at the move on the lampshade. Now, not all of them will do that. Not all of them will twirl like that. But if you can, it's a great move to prevent you from having to dance around that, is that you can spin that. That's another thing you learn at May Training Academy. So once again, she's picking up every item. She's dusting them from top to bottom. And as she's picking up the item, then she's you know, taking care of that and putting them back where they were before. With that bowl of nuts, because if there's food in there, you probably don't want to dust the top of that. You don't need to do that. Now, she didn't do the legs on that other end table. Uh, not, not, not required. I think she took a look at it. And as we talked afterwards, says, you know, that table uh, looked clean. It looked dust-free. Uh, could she have done it? Sure. 
Uh, but again, there are some judgment calls. Anytime you have a judgment call where you're going to skip some area, there's always that risk of it being a complaint. Great job. Brittany is an awesome cleaner. Uh, years and years of experience. High, high ratings from her customers. Once again, pat the pillow down. And this is the same move when you're making a bed. You know, if you have pillows on a bed, you want to flatten the pillow so it looks nice and, and uh, crisp. Flatten it, get all the stuffing out to the outer edges. Karate chop. Right there. Nice. Nice. Now you saw she skipped the uh, television screen. You never do television screens. Never. Uh, unless a customer signs a waiver, we would advocate never touching a screen on a TV screen. They actually advise to, uh, when you buy these high definition TVs, that there's a warning uh, on the box and in your instructions, you know, use this special super soft cloth and this special glass cleaner. It's not even glass cleaner because that can damage it. So for most make companies, they just steer clear of that. And customers uh, don't have problems with that. In fact, appreciate it. So not only are you cleaning a home, you're taking care of a home. Do no harm. And see how those books were all stacked up there before? We'll make a little comment toward the end of the video. But remember how those books look there? So she's cleaning and dusting. Placing those books. Now, if you do where you, you unbundle the book stack like that, uh, it's also a judgment call. Uh, if you have a lot of clutter in the house, you may not have time to do all those. Uh, but if you put if you take them apart like that, you got to put them back together, right? Because some customers say, well, you're rearranging my furniture or my decoration. You don't want to do that. But if you want if you want it to look great and get all edges, you know, it's a, it's a good move for sure. Just remember to put them back how they looked before. And when you're moving and grooving and going around the house and you're in your zone and your tempo, you may not do everything exactly right, although, you know, for the most part, people do. Uh, and you're moving. As you can see here, she didn't put those books back just like they were before. But hold that. Let's see if she does that before she exits the room. Just like in a kitchen, you're moving things out of a tray, dusting the tray, dusting the item that was in the tray, and returning it. In this, in this family room, they got some of these little dog beds, so he's getting those out of the way. You see she, how she shook them to get them out there. You don't have to vacuum those. Just shake them out. It's fine. Getting her stuff out of the way. You'll often find blankets laying a screw uh, around uh, in a, in a uh, room, whether it's a bedroom or a family room. If you don't know where it was, because it's kind of right in the middle, find a good spot. And the back of a couch is a good spot to put that. You could have put that in a lot of different places, but that's a great spot, a great default place. And so why she's moving these away, those little footstools, is that she's getting ready to vacuum. Now, when you vacuum in any room, you're not vacuuming around areas. You're, you're moving items to be able to get to all of the floor. Now, that table's too big to move. That couch is too big to move. But sometimes you will move a table. Sometimes you will move a couch. Now, those conditions and, 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 and do's and don'ts, once again, are is, is in your certification class. So she's plugging in and running the vacuum cleaner over the area rug. Now in this video, uh, we're not gonna uh, uh, show the mopping or the um, canister vac used on the hardwood floors. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and end here on uh, just the vacuuming. Some customers on hardwood floors do not want you to uh, mop their floors. Uh, some, some want you to do special things. So a whole section on floors which is a very extensive section in your certification class, goes through all the conditions, including whatever customer requests are. So again, when you're using your vacuum cleaner, uh, you know, you have to be careful. Uh, bumping furniture is a no-no. You can damage it, but you have to get very close. 
with your vacuum, even with professional vacuum, which this person's using, uh, you know, those, those bumpers that are still on there can still, if, if hit hard enough, you can really damage uh, it, just about anything with that. So she's getting under and around. Awesome move. Look at that move. Great move, Brittany. Underneath. Now, the one thing when you have an area rug like this, you don't get to see the lines in the carpet like you would in carpet. It's just a little tougher to see where you've been. But with vacuuming, you're not just going over it quickly. No, no, no. Sometimes you have to go over it several times to get all get the vacuum cleaner beater bars to, to, to bounce and to lift that dirt off there. So now what she's doing is she's returning. Those doggy vets where she found them. Super. So look at that room. She's putting them back those footstools. They were kind of kind of all over the place, but now she's putting them back in an area that probably makes sense. Good call. Now look at that room. Dynamite. Just looks great. And before you leave a room, before you leave a room, you want to stand outside of the room and look. How's everything looked? How's everything looked? Did I miss anything? You may say, the room looks perfect, Bruce. Uh, does it? Huh. Boy, it sure looks great, doesn't it? But wait. Wait for it, as they say. Wait for it. Look at those books. Now she's going back in there doing a once over look. Oh, that's right. Those books were not like that. Let's get those to look tight where they were before. There you go. Nice. And she continues to check the room before she moves on to the next room to clean.